welcome to another video. So I am here today to update you on my progress with the book Junkie Trials. And so today marks week two, or how I'm counting week two, of the trials. They've been going on for approximately two weeks now. And I think overall, I would say I'm in a good place. I know I'm in a good place. Like I know I can finish the readathon. However, I'm not where I thought I would be. I, I completely changed a lot. Well, not completely, but I changed a lot of my TBR for the additional prompts. And I'm, I'm not finished with Stardust. So let's pick up where last week's like update thing left off. So last Sunday, I was able to finish reading His Majesty's Dragon on audiobook. And it didn't get a lot better. I, I wasn't happy with that book. I think I'm, I gave it two stars or something. I just, I couldn't get into it. I was listening to the audiobook and didn't ever really, I was still zoning out a lot. I was doing my best to pay attention and not, there wasn't enough interesting stuff happening that t kept me paying attention. Every now and again, something happened and I'd be like listening for like a brief moment, but not an extended duration. Like I just wasn't interested in where the story was going. And there could be a lot of reasons for that. There could be, the, it could be the timeline. It could be the writing style, which is influenced by the time period that it's in, which I just don't like. Um, it could be that it's the first book in a series and this book was just trying to establish the relationship between the main character and his dragon which i think it did and it was the only part that i liked um but that wasn't the kind of book i wanted to read you know so i didn't i didn't like that book but i finished it and i did start stardust i'm halfway through and but i'm not done with it i have like three hours left of the audiobook for stardust and that's mostly because I started reading other things. Like audiobooks aren't my go-to usually. However, I started to read the audiobook of Stardust because even though I started the book, like I got a couple pages into the book, um, last Monday, my boyfriend and I got an email from our landlord saying that he wanted to bring people to look at the apartment. But the apartment was a mess. So we had to spend like all of Monday cleaning and even though with my sprained ankle I can't like move around very much I was still doing stuff like I folded all the laundry and I cleaned the area around my desk I just kind of sat in my desk chair and like, scooched around but that's what I did and because I did sprain my ankle I was super slow so like it didn't do a lot but it took me a long time and then while I was doing that, I was listening to Stardust. So that's where I got most of my Stardust listening in, was in cleaning to prep the apartment to be shown. And so that happened. And then also on Monday, I started reading Cinder for the... I actually should get my reading journal out so that I can reference the actual prompt I read Cinder for, like what it's called. It was the reread prompt, so... So just take a second. Crimson Peaks, which is an Outlaws prompt. So my goal for this week was to do all of the Outlaws prompts. At this point, I have done one of the Outlaws prompts, but I've also done several other prompts, so we'll get into that. But I started Monday by reading Cinder. Sometime in the afternoon, I read maybe 100 pages. It was longer than I thought it would be. I forgot how long it was. But because Cinder was a reread and it is inherently kind of a quick read, um i finished it by tuesday like i just sat down on tuesday and after the people came in to look at the apartment i read did nothing but read cinder until i finished it and i was able to get through it super quickly because i, I already knew what, what was going to happen so i wasn't like trying to build the world in my head or try to follow like sequences of events because i knew everything already i was just reading the words again and it was fun i like i really loved the lunar chronicles um so i finished that by tuesday and then the next thing I started, oh, I started the second prompt for the Outlaws, which is um, Queendom Stone. 
and you need to read a book that features royalty. So I started to read Heartless by Marissa Meyer. But that was slow going. One, it's also longer than I thought it would be. This one's like 500 pages. And I was like, well, that's, that's gonna take a while. Um, but then I also forgot that I don't like Alice in Wonderland. And so I need to back up just a bit because I did not explain this well enough. Cinder was a book. It's the first in, four, in a series of four books. And it's a Cinderella retelling that takes place in the future in a place called New Beijing, which is part of like an empire or a kingdom. And they are a lot like Earth, but they're like super green and they have um, like technology we don't have. And one of those technologies is the ability to have cyborgs. And cyborgs are like discriminated against. They, people don't like them. They don't trust them. People don't think that they are fully human, even though they're only partially robot. And so people only become cyborgs in the most like extreme circumstances. Like after events, like life-threatening events, do people get cyborg parts? And the main character is a cyborg. And she's a mechanic because she has an unusually high amount of cyborg partners. Like she's she's got a lot going on um, that's robot in her, and so that lets her really like get access to schematics and lots of information really easily. That allows her to be a really good mechanic. And when the story starts off, she's just at her stall and she gets commissioned by the prince to fix an android for him. And androids are robots. They are fully robots. They've never been human even though they can sometimes act really human-like. And then also like in the background story, the like side plot, there's also um, a plague happening in the area and around the world for maybe a decade or so. And people don't know, they don't know how to fix it. People get it and they die. And they've been searching for a cure for years and they have not been able to find it. And so, that's the world of Cinder, and it's really good. Additionally, there is a lunar colony, and the lunar colony went up there like hundreds of years before the events of Cinder and have kind of mutated to become a slightly different species. And so the lunars are kind of in a weird political situation with the Earth people, and they're always on the brink of war, and that, that's what's happening. And so moving forward, the, the series is about that political conflict, finding the, dealing with the plague and, and things like that. It's, it's good. Moving on to Heartless and why I didn't like Heartless, or not didn't like, but why it, is, it was slow for me to read and I, I still haven't finished it, is because it is an Alice in Wonderland retail. And I don't actually like Alice in Wonderland. So... Heartless is the story of the Queen of Hearts before she becomes the Queen of Hearts. She's just a girl. She wants to become a baker and open up her own shop, her own little bakery, even though she is, like, her family's really influential. Like, they're, the, they're a Marquess and a Mar... I don't know the titles, but her father is, like, a Marquess and friends with the king. And they're really influential and, like, they're... It wouldn't be, like, proper for her to, to be a baker and her family doesn't want her to be a baker like that's not what they are grooming her for is to be a baker they want her to get like a, a well-placed marriage and they want her to continue to be wealthy and, and things like that and that's not what she wants and then that's really all I know I think and it just takes place in the world of Alice in Wonderland and so that inherently affects things about it like part of what I don't like about Alice in Wonderland is is the world I mean it's kind of weird and that's for some part of its charm but for me I, I not I never feel it it's too strange and really the strangeness comes from the fact that it reminds me of Alice in Wonderland which is a story that I don't like um I don't even know exactly what I don't like about it well, okay so yeah, I don't know exactly what it is about Alice in Wonderland that doesn't sit well with me. I think there are just certain images about, like, the Disney animated version that never, that, like, freaked me out. 
as as a small child and I ever since just haven't liked the world very much so like the Tweedledee Tweedledum scene in Alice in Wonderland freaks me out I don't like the Mad Hatter he's kind of creepy um the the story and the at least in the Disney version I don't know if it's in the book that has the like two guys by the sea and they're trying to open up this oyster shop and they lure in these baby oysters i can't so there's a lot of stuff about alice in wonderland that doesn't sit well with me the cheshire cat i also don't like he's creepy so heartless is in this world and it it also I, i'm not feeling it but i'm still going to read it i think i've just I've switched things up a lot. So I started it on Tuesday. I am not really actively reading it right now. I'm maybe a hundred pages in. Then on Wednesday, I think. There's a lot that I have done. Yeah, so Wednesday I did a lot. Wednesday I read two prompts, but they were both graphic novels. And I wasn't going to put graphic novels in my list just because I didn't think I had any. Um, I didn't know where they were kept in my library and I thought, you know, I could probably do all the prompts with books. No, 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 I don't think I could do all the prompts with books. That was not, that was not a good plan. Because even if I could, which I could if I, if I read and did nothing else, but I need to start doing some other stuff. I need to clear up some prompts so that I can focus on my independent study a bit more so that I can start packing. I just need to do some other stuff. So graphic novels. I don't own any, but my boyfriend owns some. And so I have picked up some of his and used them, fit them into prompts. So for example, the first one I read on Wednesday was volume one of Sandman by Neil Gaiman. So I have that here. And it was good. I liked it, but it was creepy. It I put it down for the horror prompt, which is on the Hallow Isle, where you have to read an atmospheric or horror book. I was going to read a book that was like the review said it was atmospheric, but it was a long book. I think it was like 500 pages, 600 pages. And I wasn't as interested in it. I thought it might be interesting, but I also felt like it might be a slower read for me. Whereas Sandman is a couple hundred pages. It is a graphic novel, like comic book thing, and it's horror. Um, my boyfriend told me that after the first couple of volumes, it actually shifts tones a bit and isn't as it's not as much of a horror. But for a while, it started as being an outright horror. Like that's what Neil Gaiman wrote it to be. And it's true, it's so graphic and creepy and oh my god, I was nauseous the whole time I was reading it. I like, it really challenged me. But it was also interesting. So it takes, it, it starts out like the premise is that you have the Sandman who is actually an eternal, like godlike being who controls people's dreams and like can affect them and can build things within them. And that's his realm. But some humans are doing a ritual in which they're trying to capture death. But through some mistake, or maybe death wasn't available, I don't know what happens, they accidentally capture the Sandman. And he's captured for years, like 70 years or something. And he doesn't age and he doesn't die, but he's just sitting there the whole time, waiting for something to happen so that he can break free and get his revenge. And so that's what happens. Um, or like that's the, the premise of the beginning of this series and then we're basically we're following him and the things that happened to him at least so far and I liked it I the art style isn't really my thing it's super gritty and I don't know I like pretty and shiny things and this is not that at all it's super graphic super gory in some places and there's this whole episode so like Volume one of like this bound version of Sandman takes place over the first like eight issues, I think, of what would have been like a serialized comic book series. This is a binding that has the first eight. 
and there's a whole issue that's about this guy and the horrible things he's doing to the world he's like driving people insane and there's this um this diner full of people who he's tormenting and driving them crazy so that they start to like injure and mutilate each other and themselves and it's horrifying it's it oh my god so like look away now if you don't want to see some of these images because i will show you some non-spoilery ones so you can get an idea of the kind of stuff that i'm talking about first of all this is just the art style so pretty gritty pretty dark then there's a whole section where like someone's head explodes and i'm like what i don't know if i'll find it i think i've already passed it it was at the beginning ish and oh my god i just couldn't believe this that's why i want to find it it'll be worth it you have to aha okay so I'm going to try to cover some stuff. That's someone's head exploding. And then... The super disturbing um, chapter thing has stuff like... This happening. Okay, so if you looked away because of the graphicness, I've taken the pictures off now so you can look again. But, it was truly disturbing. But it's also, it's like, it's a super interesting series. Like, it was, it made me super uncomfortable, but I'm super interested in it. I think I got weird stuff in my coffee. I dropped it from somewhere. That's really sad. There was some dust on my Neil Gaiman book. So I'm just going to set this to the side. But it was super interesting. I would give it 4 out of 5 stars. It was interesting. I wanted to know like what was going to happen. There was always something happening. Even if it did disturb me and make me nauseous. And... Yeah, I enjoyed this read, so I finished this in a day. Then, the next thing I read on that same day is Blankets by Craig Thompson. And I... Oh, so Sandman was recommended to my boyfriend by his brother. That's why he has the first three books, because he promised his brother he would read them if his brother watched Breaking Bad, which is one of my boyfriend's favorite... his favorite television show. And... His brother has has watched Breaking Bad, but my boyfriend has not read Sandman. I have I've now read more Sandman than he has. Um, then the next book is Blankets, which my boyfriend got as a Christmas present from one of his sisters. And knowing him at all, I don't know why she would give him this book. First of all, I didn't even like this book. And I am very generous. In things that I like or that I say will okay will be are okay and the things that I'm willing to read like I read across lots of genres whereas my boyfriend pretty much specializes in epic fantasy he wants to be an epic fantasy writer and he doesn't stray very much from that genre this has nothing to do with epic fantasy it's incredibly thick and large but nothing happens in it it's all this paper and there's nothing and on the back it's like well reviewed people are like wow it's so beautiful and tender and i'm like no it's boring so i read this and i counted it for dwarf mount where you need to read something with a hint of romance because this does involve a romance it is semi-autobiographical for the author craig thompson it's his growing up so you get stories with him and his brother when they're really young and then you also see him in high school 
when he falls in love for the first time, uh, what happens with her. And I didn't like it. I guess it's going for like relatability or something, but this story wasn't relatable to me at all. Especially because the, the main character is a hardcore Christian. And I am not a hardcore Christian. I'm the softest Catholic there ever was. I was raised Catholic. I do not practice it at all. And my my own personal religious beliefs are pretty ambivalent. Like, I don't care very much to feel to decide whether I think there's a God or there's not a God or what happens after. I'm just interested in what's going on right now in the earth and on my life in my life um and i also don't care for ritual that much like the catholic rituals i don't get them a lot and so yeah an unquestioning faith doesn't vibe with me so i didn't mean to get super religious but that this book is is fairly religious because the um main character is catholic he is so catholic and so devout that like his minister recommends after high school he might consider becoming a minister um and his his religion influences his whole life it influences his, how he approaches his first love it influences how his relationships with his brother and how he thinks about himself and it's there it's super present and that is funny to me because remember this book was given to my boyfriend by his sister as a Christmas present and if I'm like um what's the word I used if I'm like indifferent to religion he is hostile towards it like he's super irreligious and he doesn't like reading about it he doesn't like talking about it he's like no um and so it's crazy because he would hate this book he would hate the main character so much because he doesn't want he doesn't care for it for those themes and so i don't know oh and then it's also the plainest romance ever like i don't like it there nothing happens and again if you're going for relatability i guess it's like it's realistic i suppose it's it's the kind of romance and the kind of story that would happen but it's also the most uninteresting version of that and I don't know why you will want to read that. Like, I know what my life is like. This is my, this is why I stick to fantasy a lot. Is that when I read contemporary books, while they can be interesting sometimes if they're really good, most often if they're too contemporary, and this one is incredibly contemporary, you are reading about things that could have happened to you. And they're not always that interesting. Like my life, it's not interesting. Or it's not exciting. I like it and I'm comfortable in it and I don't want to be Sandman trapped for 70 years in a snow globe because that's more exciting. No, I like my routine and I like doing the same kinds of things every day, but I don't want to read about it, you know? And so that's why I stick to fantasy. And there are definitely those who would love those this book. There are those who have loved this book per the reviews on the back, per the fact that it was gifted um, by my brother's sister. She probably really liked this book. I did not like this book. I thought it was super slow. It lacked anything, any kind of dramatic element. It lacked action. I didn't enjoy it. It was um, not relatable to me because it was about a Christian teenage boy. Um, I am neither devoutly christian nor a teenage boy never been a teenage boy um it i don't have a little brother and th those were my favorite sections though were the stories about him and his little little brother because in some ways they did remind me of my relationship with my little sister but that's it and that was not enough to to fill this nearly 600 page book to make it interesting enough for me um they meet at bible camp him and his first love never been to Bible camp. My boyfriend and I met in a college dorm room. 
um, or dorm, like common room. Um, I just didn't like this book. I definitely give it 1.5 out of 5 stars. If you like, and that's not to say like if you like this book, like I'm not saying anything against you. I just really didn't like this book. Um, but I can see how there would be those people who would like it. You would just have to be into things that I'm not into. You'd have to enjoy contemporary fiction. You'd have to enjoy simple stories about people and their lives. You would have to enjoy, um, or you would have to be interested in reading about someone's like spiritual journey. You would have to be okay with like a slow pace that's not about necessarily even about entertainment. It's more about communicating a story like his story. And that's not really what I'm into reading. Um, I'm interested in things like that from people I know, from people I've spoken to. If someone told me this story in person, I think that that might be interesting. But to read it in this graphic novel form, I, I didn't enjoy. So. <sighs> yeah uh -uh. if you are interested in like the art style it's black and white very newspaper cartoony and so that's fine the art style wasn't wasn't that bad and it was a really interesting thing to read both of these in one day because you had this that was incredibly graphic and fast-paced and sometimes confusing and graphic and dramatic and then you had this that was super slow very like I want to call it melodic, like da 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 da. That's like the pace this has, and um, not graphic at all. I read this and got nauseous. I read this and got bored. So it was it was interesting. These are some. It was an interesting thing to read both of them on one day. Phew. Okay, I went on about that for a while, but I had some strong feelings. And then, oh, I don't think I have it with me. Oh, that's a shame. Okay, but that's fine. So also on Wednesday, after I finished reading all these books, I started to read the fifth season by I forget her name completely, but the fifth season is a book. It won a Hugo Award, which I didn't know anything about until my boyfriend told me. It's a very prestigious award, and the rest of the series has won Hugo Awards. So the first book is called The Fifth Season, and it won the 2016 Hugo Award, and then the next book is called The Obelisk Gate, and it won the 2017 Hugo Award, or a 2017 Hugo Award. I don't know how they're like how many get awarded each year. And then the last one is the stone something and it won the 20, an eight, a 2018 Hugo Award. So like this is a highly like acclaimed book series. It's also fantasy, it's a fantasy trilogy. And it's weird, it's so crazy. I can't speed read through it, but I enjoy every word. Like the tone and the narration is so, it's like, it's quirky and mysterious and kind of vague and it's really good. So the fifth season follows three different story paths. Um, but really it, it, it follows like the end of the world, like an apocalyptic event. That's what seasons are. So this is the fifth season. I don't know if it's the fifth season, like where they start counting one season two season three season but basically in this world it's very common that there are huge apocalyptic events because the planet that they're on is super mobile like plates are always shifting and so there are lots of really big earthquakes and things and um in this book the very beginning you find out that there has been an incredible shake like there's a new fault line the continent is ex experiences a shockwave for miles and miles across its whole face and ash is coming up into the air 
because volcanic um, vaults beneath the crust have started spewing out ash and it's going to be so thick that people expect this season to last thousands of years. And so the way this world works is that people have been able to continue because seasons, periods of time where it's dark because of ash and things don't grow and it gets really cold, um, last a handful of years, the longest last two or three decades. But this one's expected to last hundreds if not into the thousands of years before the world will be the same again. And I don't know what's gonna happen. I have no idea, but like in the prologue, the, the narration tells you like, this is how the world ends for the last time. It's so crazy. Doesn't that sound just crazy? Like I, I so, I started to read this book for the first time two years ago. I got maybe 50 pages in. My boyfriend read it first and then he recommended it to me, so I started to read it. I don't know what else I was doing at the time, but I got distracted and I started, I, I stopped reading it. I picked it up again Wednesday evening and I started to read it again. Got like 30 pages in and then spent all day Thursday reading it. And then any reading I did yesterday, Friday, I also spent reading it. It was so good. I haven't finished it. I have 150 pages maybe to read and I'm excited. I ordered the last two books and they should get here tomorrow. And I'm really excited for that because it has been a long time since I've bought books, paper books. I've been buying a couple of eBooks here and there because they're generally pretty cheap. I buy them on sale. I got Nevernight for $2.99 last week. That was exciting. Um, but I haven't bought physical books in a while. And so that was fun. And I'm excited about the series because it's super intriguing. There's this crazy apocalyptic event and you don't really understand it. And like some of the characters don't really understand it. There are three different storylines, people from lots of different ages. You follow um, a mother um, and she her, her story gets told in the second person, which is really weird and unique because it's, it's you. The story says you walked over here and you did this and you did that. But then you also follow a young woman who's like early 20s and she's involved in, in an organization and, and part of this world. And then you also follow a young child who's like 10 or 12 or something like that. And she's got her own thing going on. And I'm not giving lots of details because like the back synopsis of the book really doesn't give any details. And the world setting that I've already given you is kind of in the prologue. But then the stuff that happens after happens really slowly. And like, you don't know what's going on. You don't know what happens until you read it. And so I don't want to give too much away, but I'm really enjoying it. I'm excited to read more of it today. And so the fifth season was not on my original TBR, but I didn't know what I wanted to read. I wasn't feeling anything on the original TBR. And my boyfriend, again, recommended that I actually finish it now. And so I thought, okay, I'll finish it. And I'm reading it for the war, military, and political themes prompt for the Elven Guard, a prompt for the Bards team because it involves political themes. There are different factions and different races in this world and there are tensions between them and there are different, there's like a hierarchy in an organization that has different tensions. And so I feel like it's definitely political. And my boyfriend said that it involves war or something like that or, or military-esque ideas. So I'm testing him on that and I'm going to count it for that prompt. Then, the last thing I finished this week is this book, which is super, super small. It's another graphic novel, The Legend of Korra, Turf Wars, Volume 1. And this is the first in a set of three volumes for the Turf Wars like story in the Legend of Korra world. And my boyfriend got me the set of three for Christmas, and we've been reading them together, so we read them side by side. I turn the pages because I read just a little slower than he does. Um, 
and it's really good. So The Legend of Korra is like a sequel spin-off series to Avatar The Last Airbender, which is a really good series. Um, the Legend of Korra is not as good as Avatar The Last Airbender because it's more episodic. The, there are three seasons and each season kind of has its own story arc, whereas in Avatar The Last Airbender, all the seasons follow a much longer story arc and that's a, it's really good. Um, but Legend of Korra, each season kind of does its own thing and occasionally there's some overlap, but not much. And yeah, and then like one season is actually really slow, but it's good, I think. I, in general, I enjoy it. And this book, um, this graphic novel takes place right after the events of the series finale for the animated show. And so like literally the next scene where the show cuts off, the next part takes place in this. And it picks up right where it left off. And it's really cool. Um, it involves stuff that I feel like wouldn't be on the show, like it couldn't have been on the show because it's a Nickelodeon show. I am um, politics, age ratings. I don't, I don't know, but there are some things that like I don't think Nickelodeon would have been brave enough to put on the show. But it's in this book. It's really good. I like it. It was super surprising to me, just like the next few pages slash scenes of what happens, and then this sets up a new conflict where it's called turf wars and there are turf wars um at the end of the last and this might be a little spoilery if you haven't seen the original series but at the end of the last episode um a new spirit portal opens up and it's in the middle of, of a populated area and so the person who originally owned that land is causing conflict he's like i want to build stuff here and do things to this area and they're like no we have to protect the spirit portal then the upheaval that happens because of this and the events of the last season also causes turf wars between like gangs or factions in new republic city and they're fighting each other and it's good i liked this volume i'm excited for the next volume we read this in a couple of days. We read like half of it on one day and then the half of it the next day um, because we did have to read it together. And so I had to wait for him and he had to wait for me and then we read for a little bit and then we did other stuff. But it's good. Excited for the next one. What do I hope to do now moving forward? I hope to finish Stardust this week. I need to finish it. I wanted to finish it by tomorrow, but I don't know that I will. I don't like it enough to do that. I want to finish the fifth season. Also, hopefully, I wanted to do it by tomorrow, but I I woke up really late today. I could not sleep yesterday, so I woke up really late when I finally did fall asleep. And I don't know. I'm also, I'm checking the time because I should go soon, but maybe I can wrap this up. So... Yeah, I don't know that I'll finish both of those. I hope to because even if I don't though, it it will be okay because next week is really light. My goal is for next week, in addition to wrapping up whatever I don't finish of the fifth season and Stardust is to read two books, I think. And the first is the next in a series prompt. And I want to read Obelisk Gate, which is the next in the fifth season series. I think it's called the uh, the Broken Earth series. And then the book that's been on your TBR forever. I want to finish reading or listening to The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. I'm about halfway through it, I think. I was listening to it while I was falling asleep last night. So I, was, I set a sleep timer and I listened to it and I had to reset the sleep timer a couple of times. Did the parts I listened to, do I know them super well because I was falling asleep to them? No, but I'm going to keep moving forward and I enjoyed what I did listen to. And I feel like it's the kind of thing I'll listen to multiple times. I really enjoy listening to it. It's super interesting and the narrator, like the voice they picked is really good and I like it. So 
Yeah, but the reason for that is that the following week is going to be super hardcore. It is the Reading Rush, which is another readathon. I will be announcing my TBR later in the week, um, probably next Sunday. And wow, I had to go. I did not realize how late it was. so much glare on my glasses right now look at this you can't even see my eyes um